Familial bonding is an essential mode of keeping the kids happy and healthy. It allows the parents to really enjoy the grueling task of parenting. But does that also apply to murder? Welcome to Tales of Two Cities. Hello? Welcome. This is Tales of Two Cities. Joseph Callinger was born Joseph Lee Brenner III at Northern Liberties Hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Joseph Lee Brenner Jr. and Judith Brenner on December 11, 1935. Two years later, he was placed in foster care when his father Joseph left him and his mother. On October 15, 1939, he was adopted by Austrian immigrants, Stephen and Anna Killinger, who relentlessly abused him. He was abused so much that he suffered a hernia inflicted by his adoptive father. His abuse also included being forced to kneel on jagged rocks, being locked inside closets, force-fed feces, forced self-injury, being burned with an iron, whippings, and being denied food. When he was nine, he was assaulted by a group of neighborhood boys. Despite all that sadness, that didn't stop his dreaming. He wanted to be a playwright, and he had played the part of Ebenezer Scrooge in the local YMCA performance of A Christmas Carol in the ninth grade. At 15, he met a girl named Hilda Bergman. They eventually got married and had two children. She later left him because he got abusive, which also led to his hospitalization. He suffered severe headaches and a loss of appetite. On April 20th, 1958, Callinger remarried and had five children with his second wife. He was abusive towards them too, and he inflicted the same punishments on them that his parents did on him before. Callinger spent time in and out of mental institutions for amnesia, attempted suicide, and for committing arson. His children went to the police because they couldn't take the relenting abuse. He went to jail in 1972. While in jail, he scored an 82 on an IQ test and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. He was then recommended to have supervised visits with his family. Even though the kids later recanted their allegations, Joseph Jr. was found dead and Callinger took out a large $250,000 life insurance policy on said child. The insurance agency suspected foul play and refused to pay. Beginning in July in 1974, Callinger and his 15-year-old son, Michael, went on a crime spree spanning Philadelphia, Baltimore, and New Jersey. Over the next six weeks, they robbed, assaulted, sexually abused four families, and murdered three people. They gained access to all of that while pretending to be salespeople. On January 8th, they moved their killings to Leonia, New Jersey. Using a pistol and a knife, they overpowered and tied up three residents. However, others started entering the house, ruining Callinger's plans. When the others entered the home, they were forced to strip and were bound with cords from lamps and other appliances. This eventually ended in the killing of 21-year-old nurse Maria Fashing, the eighth person to arrive. When she reprimanded Callinger, he responded by slitting her throat. Police investigated Callinger after finding a bloody shirt and through eyewitness testimony that he and his son had been seen in the area. Callinger's history of domestic violence, Joseph Jr.'s unsolved death, and a series of arsons targeted against buildings he owned soon came into full affluation. He and his son were arrested on kidnapping and rape charges and eventually charged with three counts of murder in New Jersey state courts. Callinger pleaded insanity, claiming God had told him to kill. However, he was found sane, but got life in prison. Michael was sentenced to a reformatory because it could clearly be seen that he was under his father's control. Upon his release at 21, he moved out of state and changed his name. 
While in prison, Callinger made several suicide attempts, including trying to set himself on fire. He was transferred to a mental hospital in Trenton, New Jersey. Joseph Callinger died of heart failure on March 26, 1996 at SCI Crescent. He spent the last 11 years of his life on suicide watch. I always found it interesting that when a new family comes into a nearby home, everyone in the neighborhood breathes a sigh of relief. A good nature family is now in your circle. There's nothing to fear. But I think we're starting to realize that's not true. The people you should fear are the ones that you let your guard down. And possibly the biggest monster is using you to teach its kid. So the next time the family arrives, Keep your guard up. It might be the only thing that keeps you alive. Stay tuned for our Halloween serial killer horror of minis. The tales are historically intriguing and handpicked by both Nikki and I. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and email at tales of the number two cities podcast at gmail.com. Please check out our merch store. We'll be adding more and more serial killer merch throughout the month of October. And also check out our Patreon. I produce many episodes on California urban legends that you can purchase for a one-time fee of $5. And thank you so much for listening.